Hello and welcome to this Cancer Grace webinar. My name is Bisham Chera. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'm also the associate chair for clinical operations and improvement and the director of patient safety and quality in my department. I uh, have expertise clinically and academically in treating and doing research treating head and neck cancer patients and doing research in the clinical, uh, the clinical field of uh, head and neck oncology. I'm a radiation oncologist uh, by profession. Today I'm going to speak about the role of HPV in head and neck cancers. The first topic I'd like to discuss is what is HPV-related head and neck cancer? So a bit of history first. Uh, there are fa there's a famous scientist who discovered and, and, and hypothesized and researched and showed that HPV, uh, can't, HPV, the HPV virus, the human papillomavirus, is actually uh, the, uh, the potential cause of cancer in, in humans. And so this is Harold Zerhausen. He's a German virologist. Uh, some interesting facts about him. He escaped Nazi Germany. He actually contributed also to discovering the Epstein-Barr virus, which is another type of virus that can cause a different kind of head and neck cancer. And in 1976, he published the hypothesis that HPV plays an important role in cervical cancer. In 1977, he discovered a different type of, a different strain of HPV, HPV-6, as the cause of genital warts. And in 1983 and 84, he actually identified HPV-16 and 18 DNA in cervical cancer itself, further proving that this virus causes, can cause cancer. And he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in Medicine in 2008 for his work with the human papillomavirus. So the human papillomavirus is a double-stranded circular DNA virus. It is, has about 8,000 base pairs. There are proteins that are involved in creating in, in its, um, in its uh, biological role in causing cancer. And that would be protein E6 and E7. And these two proteins are what drive the oncogenesis in uh, epithelial cells in human beings. There are actually 200 different types of HPV, and about 30 of these types actually infect the mucosa. And with the mucosa, what I mean by this is epithelial lined uh, surfaces, such as the skin, the inner, the inner parts of, of a, the mouth and the throat, and as well as the anal genital tract, the uh, cervix, uh, vagina, um, penis, and anal areas. So the most common viruses that cause, HPV viruses that cause disease in humans are HPV 6 and 11, which we consider, we call them, your doctor will call them as low risk, as they don't cause cancer, but the other, they cause other types of benign uh, proliferations or tumor growth, such as genital warts or condylomas. The two most common high-risk types of HPV, these are the types of HPV that cause actual cancer, or HPV 16 and 18. In head and neck cancer, the type of HPV that is most often found as the as associated with head and neck cancer is HPV 16. And here I have a table just showing you that different types of, H, types of HPVs and what kinds of uh, diseases they cause. Again, physicians break them down and scientists break them down into low risk HPV strains that actually cause benign non-cancerous lesions and then high risk HPV strains which cause cancer. Again, the most common being 16 and 18, but there are other strains and types of HPV that can also cause cancer. So what is the life cycle of the HPV virus? How do you get an HPV infection? Well, generally speaking, HPV infects the epithelial cells of mucosal surfaces, your skin, the um, lining of your mouth, the lining of the anal genital tract. For HPV to, an HPV likes to infect the very first layer, or what we call the basal layer of the epithelial, uh, epithelial surface. And so for HPV to get access to this basal layer of epithelial cells, there has to be some type of trauma to the epithelial cell barrier for the virus to basically trans get down to the very bottom basal epithelial layer. 
And so this 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 trauma, for example, in the in the cervix, is uh, due to the fact that the lining of the cervix naturally um, turns over uh, and regenerates itself uh, according to a woman's uh, 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 menstrual cycle. And so this basal layer during the menstrual cycle is exposed for some time and is not covered with um, a protective layer of cells, and that's how the HPV gets access to the cervix and causes an infection of the cervix. But also, you know, for a, for a, 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 a for the male for a male patient having trauma to the penis, if there's a if there's some type of disruption of the epithelial layer on the penis, HPV can get um, access to infect other the uh, the uh, male genital tract. And the same thing with with uh, with the anus, HPV is, in, is is been is a culprit for causing anal cancer. Similar kind of thing happens there. But over time, through the virus infecting the cell, over time the virus, uh, and I'll show you in the next few slides how it actually uh, 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 predisposes the cell to become cancerous. And over time, it takes years actually uh, for uh, cancer to develop. Uh, most pay, most people in the most people are exposed to HPV during their lifetime, but most people clear the infection only in patients where this infection is not cleared and becomes a chronic latent infection, over years of the virus being active in the cell does it turn into, does it cause cancer to occur. So HPV, high-risk HPV strains can cause cancer of the genital tract, namely cervix and anal, anal cancer, but the HPV can also cause cancer of the throat or the back of the tongue or the tonsil um, as uh, doctors refer to these areas. So what am I talking about? So in your throat, there are what the tonsils that we what we normally consider tonsils is what you can see when you look in a mirror and you open your mouth and you see these two bulging uh, like uh, little small masses and on each side of your throat, way in the back, kind of next to your uvula and soft palate. That's what we that's the generic uh, colloquial term for tonsil. But actually, there are there is a tonsil on the back of the tongue called the lingual tonsil. And HPV, the virus HP, the high-risk HPV virus actually infects these areas uh, and can create and promote cancer to develop in these areas of the back of the throat. So here, here I'm showing you where these are in the in the back uh, in in the throat. And here's the uh, what we the the, the tonsil. Uh, but then in the back of the tongue or the base of tongue, there's another tonsil called the lingual tonsil. So the palatine tonsil is what we generically, you know. The, gener the generic public considers it a tonsil, but there's also another tonsil in the base of tongue. And these are the areas where HPV sets up shop, creates an infection, and promotes cancer growth development. So I showed you how HPV needs to have, uh, the epithelial barrier has to have an opening for the HPV to get into so that it can infect the very bottom layer of the epithelial cells. Well, how does it infect the tonsil, the lingual tonsil, the palatine tonsil? Well, anatomically, what do these these two uh, uh, organs serve? What is their what is their purpose? And actually, what the tonsil serve a purpose? The purpose of the tonsil, we think, is that uh, that is where uh, the, our immune system gets its first exposure to uh, this bacteria bacteria and viruses so that we can help us develop immunity. So here in, in this, in this uh, diagram, this is a tonsil kind of, kind of cut in half, and you can see that the, the, little, the tonsil has crypts in it, and these crypts um, are there to basically act like uh, increase the surface area to get, to get more exposure of the immune system to potential infectious um, bacteria and viruses so the immune system can develop immunity. And that, and then, and these tonsillar crypts, there's actually holes in them that allow the the white blood cells to migrate past the epithelial cells and get um, access to exposure uh, to uh, viruses and bacteria, so that the immune system can develop. And these uh, these areas are vulnerable for uh, HPV to uh, uh, to transverse and cause infection of the very first layers of epithelial cells in the tonsil area. And so this is what people hypothesize is the reason why the tonsil and base of tongue are particularly um, uh, vulnerable to HPV infection. This type of tonsillar tissue is not present in, um, in other parts of the oral tongue or oral cavity, 
and, and we don't see HPV infection in those areas is very low. So biologically, real quick, how does HPV cause cancer in the cell? Well, there is a protein called the P53 protein in a cell that basically is referred to as a guarding the genome. And the purpose of P53 is that it stops the cell from cycling or reproducing if there is damage to the DNA or mutations in the DNA. And it basically helps, tells the cell, stop reproducing. We need to fix the DNA damage before we move ahead. Well, HPV, the E6 protein, actually causes degradation of this very key protein, normal protein in a cell. And so what happens is, is that in cells that are infected with HPV, this P53 levels are low, and so when you develop, when the cell develops mutations, it doesn't fix them and it continues to grow and, 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 and create other, other cells. And over time, if enough mutations amount themselves, that will result in the, the creation of cancer. The same thing happens to another key protein in the normal cell called the retinoblastoma protein. E7, another protein that's, that's produced by the HPV virus, does the same thing to it. Retinoblastoma also controls the cell cycle, and then normally, whenever there is DNA damage, the retinoblastoma protein puts the brakes on the cell from cycling and basically allows time for the cell to repair itself. But with the E7 protein there, it, the retinoblastoma protein gets uh, basically degraded. And so these two key functional proteins that help the cell stop and slow down and repair any DNA damage that may have occurred or mutations that have occurred in DNA are not functioning. And when you do that, what happens is, is the cells progress with mutations. And over time, over years and years, with, with more mutations developing and more time uh, with, with, with uh, in that kind of environment, cancer is, um, is, is created. Another important thing to know is that when the virus destroys the retinoblastoma protein, there's a reciprocal increase in the cell of another protein called P16. This is a normal protein. It also serves the function of slowing down the cell to allow the cell to repair itself and to prevent tumor and, and actually kind of slow down tumor progression or creation. And so this protein is important because later when we talk about how, how does your doctor check for the virus, you, this P16 protein is reciprocally elevated in HPV-associated uh, head and neck cancers, and it serves as a surrogate marker uh, for detecting HPV. So. HPV is implicated in development of certain types of head and neck cancer, particularly of the tonsil, lingual, and palatine tonsils. But, you know, smoking, which in an alcohol consumption, excessive smoking and alcohol consumption, are, have always been known to cause cancer. And so these two, having tobacco-induced head and neck cancer versus HPV-induced head and neck cancer, are, we now know that they're two different entities, and they have two different prognoses, they have different kinds of mutations. They behave differently. But there's also this intermediate group where patients who have the virus but also have excessive tobacco and smoking histories and alcohol histories can have both the virus and a virus-induced cancer and a tobacco alcohol-induced cancer. And these behave differently than the other two. And so we're seeing now that there are basically three uh, stratifications of uh, uh, head and neck cancer those that uh, are purely caused by alcohol and tobacco, those that are we think are mainly caused by the human papillomavirus, and then something in the middle, those that may be caused by both, alcohol, tobacco, and the HPV virus.